Buy your stat 66111 Skills for the rest of your life Bootstraps and probability It's the bread and butter, baby, what's your jam? Howdy Bio 6611. In this lecture, we're going to talk more about bootstrap sampling by introducing how we can estimate different types of confidence intervals and also walk through a one sample example. So let's start with confidence intervals. We've seen them previously as output from data or derived in some of our summaries as ways to calculate things like the critical values we would see maybe with a power calculation to compare um, one distribution to another. So before we get into that, let's first revisit the bootstrap sampling procedure for a single population. So assume we have a population and we take a sample of size n from that population. To implement our bootstrap sample, we're going to draw a resample of size n with replacement from our sample. We're going to compute some statistic that describes the sample, for example, the sample mean. We will repeat this process, uh, resampling process, many times, you know, for example, 10,000, and then we'll construct the bootstrap distribution of our statistic, inspect its spread, bias, and shape. From that distribution as well, we can also estimate the variability of our statistic by calculating a confidence interval. In this lecture, we will introduce two types of calculations, a normal percentile, which will introduce some distributional assumptions, and also a bootstrap percentile, which is purely non-parametric. So let's start with normal percentile confidence intervals. Since we are calculating the mean of our statistic from our bootstrap distribution, or in other words here, mean we can think of as the expected value of whatever theta hat is star from our distribution, we could potentially leverage the central limit theorem to calculate a normal percentile confidence interval. And by that, we mean we can, from our distribution, calculate that mean, the standard error for the bootstrap distribution, and then we can, as confidence intervals go, take plus or minus um, the critical value at whatever threshold or desired level of confidence we wish to have. Now, this may raise questions about, you know, we're doing this sort of non-parametric approach with the bootstrap. Why are we interested in then applying some parametric assumptions? Well, one is that the central limit theorem can be pretty powerful, and so we may wish to leverage that. However, it is very possible as well that the bootstrap distribution could deviate from normality. So then, in that case, this approximation using the central limit theorem would be inaccurate. Fortunately, and we'll see this in our example, we can check the performance of the central limit theorem by calculating the coverage in each one of our tails. Since the normal distribution is symmetric, for a 95% confidence interval, we would expect 2.5% of the bootstrap distribution to be in each of those two tails, or the extremes of the tails. If our coverage is not approximately 2.5%, in that case, we should consider other methods to estimate our confidence interval. For example, the bootstrap percentile confidence interval. In this case, we can take a purely empirical estimate for our confidence interval. Simply, we'll take the bootstrap distribution and then the interval that falls between 2.5 and 97.5%, or the 2.5 and 97.5th percentiles of the bootstrap distribution, will represent the 95% bootstrap percentile confidence interval. Now, again, this isn't always a sure thing, and it's a pretty simple approach to estimating the confidence interval, so we do have a rule of thumb here to consider when we evaluate if this interval itself is appropriate. We'll see this in the example as well, but if our calculated bias divided by the standard error exceeds plus or minus 0 0.10, then it could have a substantial effect on the accuracy of our bootstrap percentile confidence intervals, and more accurate interval formulations should be used. For example, the bootstrap paper by Tim Hesterberg um, from 2011, which is in our Canvas paper repository, proposes some additional modifications in this case. However, we will focus in our course primarily on the normal percentile and bootstrap percentile calculations. And so with those formulas, let's walk through together a one sample example of how we might calculate and implement a bootstrap distribution and then interpret the conclusions and the results from it. We're going to look at an example of arsenic concentration in Bangladesh groundwater. 
Arsenic is a naturally occurring element in the groundwater of Bangladesh. However, much of the groundwater is also used for drinking water by rural populations, so there is a concern that if there's high levels of arsenic, there may be arsenic poisoning of the population. In this example, we're going to walk through four different steps and in interpretation pieces. We're going to describe the distribution of arsenic and groundwater from our sample and look at the sample mean and standard deviation. We'll then implement and describe the bootstrap sample for the mean level of arsenic um, in Bangladesh groundwater. And then in three and four, we'll calculate the two types of confidence intervals we looked at for the normal and bootstrap percentile approaches. So if you'd like, you can pause the video now and download the resampled data package and load it into R and follow along or try this after our lecture's over. However, the example does have the code available here in this package. And so one thing we do want to do, of course, after loading our package is to set our seed because when we do implement the bootstrap in step two, we want to make sure that that's reproducible and we can come back to our work later. However, we can note here that we can load the arsenic levels from the Bangladesh data set into this vector of values. And we can note if we looked at its length, there would be 271 wells or observations where there is a mean arsenic concentration of 125, um, I believe micrograms per liter might be the units here, um, and then the standard deviation is nearly 300, which tells us that there is a, since arsenic has to be a positive value, we can't have negative levels of arsenic, there's probably some skewness to our data. And in fact, if we take a look at some plots of the sample, we decidedly do see skewed data. We see that there is a bunch of observations on the left-hand side of our histogram for arsenic concentration suggesting low levels of arsenic, relatively speaking. However, there is a right skew to our data with some extremely high concentrations in some samples. We can further just evaluate, well, is this sample of wells normally distributed? So therefore, if we're calculating the sample mean, we know it's definitely normal. Or do we need to leverage the asymptotic properties and hope that the central limit theorem takes place with this much skew in our data? And from the QQ plot, we see that it is decidedly non-normal data, as if the histogram wasn't evidence or a red flag enough. We see here that it deviates quite drastically from our diagonal line, suggesting there are some strong departures from normality. So this leads us to step two. Perhaps that decidedly non-normal distribution of arsenic in our sample of 271 wells is concerning, and we're worried that even the central limit theorem may not give us enough accuracy in our estimate based on that extreme right skew. So maybe we decide we want to implement a non-parametric sampling strategy such as the bootstrap. So here we'll implement a bootstrap with 10,000 resamples in our bootstrap approach. So again, we're going to have what we had previously. Remember, we set the seed on the previous slide, um, but we have here the sample of 271 wells, defining the number of bootstraps B to B10,000, and initializing an object to store our bootstrap uh, results in for the estimate of the mean arsenic concentration from each bootstrap sample. Again, then we'll just implement this very simple chunk of code to then do the bootstrap and sample or resample from the original arsenic data. Once we implement that code and get our 10,000 estimates of mean arsenic, we have a bootstrap distribution we can look at. What we see here is that the bootstrap distribution of means histogram is fairly normal looking, although there is a slight right skew still to it. So there's some points, you know, that are higher means than we may expect otherwise. Likewise, the normal QQ plot looks much better than we saw previously, but there is still some deviation at the upper and lower tail, suggesting there may be some strongly uh, low or high mean values that depart from what we would expect if it was truly normal data. From the bootstrap distribution, though, we can calculate things like the mean bias and standard error to get these different statistics to summarize. For example, the mean of our arsenic uh, concentration from our bootstrap is 125.36, which if we then compare to the sample mean is pretty close with respect to bias. It 
0.044. So in general, because it is the sample mean uh, we're looking at in both the bootstrap resamples and the original sample of arsenic, we may draw the conclusion that, again, the sample mean is a pretty unbiased estimator of the true underlying mean. We can also then calculate the bootstrap standard error, which we can use in some of our calculations for the normal percentile confidence interval on the following slide, as well as to take the ratio of bias over standard error to evaluate the accuracy we expect to see for our bootstrap percentile interval. Also, we can note as well that if we did compare to the central limit theorem just based on our sample, we would get a very similar or close to standard error estimate of 18.1. So now let's look at the calculation and interpretation if we were to implement the normal percentile confidence interval. And here we just want to calculate a 95% confidence interval based on the bootstrap distribution. And we can note as well that based on our standard normal distribution, uh, z at 0 0.975 or the 97.5th percentile is approximately equal to 1.96. Again, we'll then calculate the interval by taking the mean of our bootstrap distribution and its standard error and then we'll just multiply by that critical value, 1.96, to achieve an approximately 95% confidence interval. We see here if we do this, we get a range of our lower limit of being approximately 90 and our upper limit being 160.7 uh, micrograms uh, per liter of arsenic. Strictly speaking, then, the interpretation we would want to include here is that we are the 95% normal percentile confidence interval is 90.0 to 160.7. Therefore, we are 95% confident that the true mean lies in this interval, assuming the central limit theorem applies. Again, remember here, we are assuming that the central limit theorem is giving us this critical value to use in calculating this confidence interval. However, how do we know if it was an appropriate assumption or if maybe we should be concerned about how accurate this approximation with the normal percentile is? Here's where we can calculate the coverage of the confidence interval at both the lower and the upper end of our data. And so what we see here is that for the lower end, we're going to see based on our 10,000 estimated means of our bootstrap distribution, what's the proportion of them that fall below that lower threshold? So we'll calculate that proportion by then dividing by our number of bootstraps B. Here we see it's approximately 1.69%. And then we'll also calculate a similar thing at the upper end for the number of resampled means that fall above the upper limit. Based on our estimates here for coverage, the 95% normal percentile estimates are too low for both the lower and upper bounds, since the lower bound is a coverage of 1.69%, and the upper bound is coverage of 3.13% instead of the desired 2.5%. This suggests the central limit theorem may be inaccurate. And so again, if we just quickly sketch out what we mean here, what we expect to see here is our 2.5% in each of the tails if we actually have a perfectly normal distribution. What our results actually suggest is that we really only have 1.69% based on our bootstrap sample here, and we actually have too much of our upper tail here of 3.13%. So ultimately, we probably should look at using something other than the normal percentile confidence interval in this case which fortunately leads us to the bootstrap percentile confidence interval, which is quite easier to calculate anyway. Here's our one line of code we can use in R to do this, where we literally calculate the 2.5th and 97.5th percentiles using the quantile function in R from our vector of 10,000 arsenic means. R then returns to us those two estimated values from our data, and we can interpret it as follows the 95% bootstrap percentile confidence interval is 92.1 to 163.0. We are 95% confident that the true mean arsenic concentration is in this interval. Additionally, because this is calculated just from our 10,000 bootstrap resamples, we can also note that 95% of our bootstrap means will fall between these two values of our interval, just based on the calculation with the quantile function. However, we again shouldn't just blindly accept this estimate as fact. We should evaluate the potential accuracy or lack thereof based on that ratio of the bias to the standard error. Again, taking those summaries from our previous slide, 
we get an estimate here which is pretty small. Or in other words, the accuracy of our bootstrap percentile can be estimated by the ratio of the bias over SE which is 0 0.002. Since this does not exceed plus or minus 0 0.10, we should have good accuracy. So we can actually use this bootstrap percentile confidence interval and be more confident that it actually is representing the true variability in the mean arsenic concentration of our sample of 271 wells. Now one thing to note here is that this interval is not necessarily symmetric around our estimated parameter. For example, the normal percentile interval used that calculation of x bar plus or minus 1.96, standard error of x bar, and in that case, what we saw is that it has to be symmetric based on that assumption of normality. Here, since with the bootstrap we're only estimating the quantiles, we have greater flexibility where we can actually have more or less data in one end of our tail um, with larger or smaller values, I should say, um, based on our calculation. We'll have the same amount of data because we are calculating it to be the 2.5th percentile and the 97.5th percentile. So let's tie it all together as the conclusion to this slide deck. Our estimated mean arsenic concentration from our original sample was 125.3 with a standard deviation of 298 where the standard error x bar was equal to 18.1. So the 95% confidence interval if we were to calculate that would be 89.9 to 161. If we want to assume the underlying distribution is normal or that the central limit theorem would apply to our original sample, then we might make the conclusion that the mean arsenic concentration is 125.3 micrograms per liter with a 95% confidence interval of 89.9 .9 to 161. Now, we note two things here is that we probably don't want to use this estimate here uh, of this line because one, our distribution is pretty skewed and we may be concerned about the appropriateness of the normality assumption even with the central limit theorem given our sample size. And sure enough, when we looked at the normal percentile uh, confidence interval, we had potential coverage issues in that case. So instead, we may wish to update this statement slightly by using the 95% bootstrap confidence interval to describe the variability instead. So what we see here then is that the mean arsenic concentration is 125.3 micrograms per liter with a 95% bootstrap confidence interval of 92.1 to 163.0 micrograms per liter. A few just important tidbits to note here. This estimate that we're including is the original sample arsenic concentration estimate. Remember from our first lecture on the bootstrap, the bootstrap distribution is not a good estimate for the center of the distribution. And what we're trying to describe is the variability around that sample statistic we have that we just were uncertain about making distributional assumptions on. The other thing just to mention and keep in mind is that I've added here um, bootstrap very explicitly in our summary. In practice, if you were writing a paper or a report, you should either make very clear in the methods section that you're using bootstrap methods to derive confidence intervals for certain parameters, or include this explicitly so people are aware it's not just a 95% confidence interval taking the mean plus or minus some critical value times the standard error. And so with that, we'll stop with our one sample case and in our next lecture set, we'll look at the two sample situation for bootstraps.